Hi there, and welcome back for another great episode of Can This Marriage Be Saved? I'm Rivka Slatkin. I'm Shlomo Slatkin. We're here to talk with you today about a topic that is definitely on Americans' minds these days. It's something that is coming up and it's going to get nastier and more difficult. Can you guess what it is? Type it in the chat before I say it. That is politics. And well, it's the, always on everyone's mind and it's always nasty. But the election cycle so. coming up in November is going to bring out a lot of divide. Yeah. And we know that it divides our country and it also divides couples, friends, couples, families. Our, our focus is couples here at the Marriage Restoration Project, but we definitely see this in our work with couples where maybe one of you wants to vote for one candidate and the other cannot possibly understand why in the world you'd want to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's a recipe for disaster in a relationship. Have you seen that a lot well, with couples, Shlomo? I, you know, and the truth is most of the people that I that are strong about politics and that I've worked with have similar views um, for the most part. I, I'm not thinking of any major fights, but it definitely happens. Make, that makes it easier. But I know that there's many of you out there, I've seen people writing about this, that they really want to know, is this a deal breaker for their marriage? What should they do if they really differ about political parties and, and issues that are really, really important to you? So yeah. we, we have some suggestions for you. We want to hear a little bit more from you about maybe your specific situation uh, so we can address it more fully in a future episode. Um, and I know you have some insight, Shlomo, into maybe what's happening a little bit under the surface, perhaps, that's coming out in someone's choices of candidates, of political parties and affiliation. Tell us more about sure. that. So one of the things that we talk about in the work we do is that it's not about agreeing with each other all the time. The purpose of being in a relationship is to realize that you are in a relationship with an other. And that is one of the hardest things to do because it feels threatening. It feels even more threatening because of all the fear that's propagated in the media um, to tell you about what's gonna happen if this guy wins or if that guy wins. You know, either side, it's doomsday. So people are living in fear, people are in survival mode. And this is just like, I mean, they get, you know, you see some of these videos of people like, you know, freaking out and looking like they're like insane when they're talking about their what's going on. Um, I remember some one video that we watched Last election cycle, uh -oh. was a person. Not, I'm not going to get into specifics, but we saw some video of some like a young person just. It's like a little bit, over, a little over dramatic for my taste. <laughs> <laughs> and, Too much but, drama. Yeah, in but our but house. the point is, so you have all of that fear. And everyone's in survival mode. Everyone's showing up in their worst self. And what happens with that is that they're not able to see that somebody else could have a valid perspective. Now it doesn't mean you have to agree, but it means that. To be able to see, you know what, I can make space for a different reality besides myself. And that's what relationships all about. It's dictatorship, tyranny, dictatorship. That's where it's like, it's my way and like nobody can disagree with me. And this is the only way. This is the way. You have to vote this way. And anyone who doesn't vote like me is uh, whatever adjective you want to say. And that's not... What being in a relationship is about. A relationship is about being in dialogue. A relationship is about differentiating. It's about validating each other. And what I've seen, and interesting because I've seen, I've, I've gotten curious also when I've seen clients, even though they had the same political party, same affiliation, but one of them was like very... With each say, other, not with With you. each other. No, not with me. We're not saying our... Well, I'm not necessarily me. <laughs> Some with me. You know, sometimes I have... You know, it's always tricky because you're not. I don't like to bring politics in, and I really try to be neutral. So if I hear someone saying something that I'm, you know, triggered by, I, my job is not to be triggered and to realize, okay, this is nothing to do with me, and I don't. My job is to get curious. Is this is exactly what we teach the couples? If there's something that triggers you, hmm, wonder why that bothers me so much, or wonder why this person is so passionate. Why is this person so passionate about voting for this candidate that? If this candidate doesn't win, that they're going to you know, leave the country or whatever it is. And when I began to hear their story, even though they didn't make the connection themselves, I began to make the connection. I began to see, oh, well, it makes total sense because of however the candidate is portrayed. 
or the history of the candidate and this person's personal issues, I can totally get why she or he would not, would, would really not like this person. Um, or you can think about other things. So people are worried about different issues in the election. So if somebody is coming from, let's say, I mean, I, again, I don't want to talk too much about personal issues. I'm giving hypothetical things because I don't want to like align either way. But let's say somebody, you know, immigration is a big issue. Let's say somebody crossed, somebody, you know, in Texas, there have been people who've been killed by immigrants. Some of the immigrants, let's say, you know, they're not all law-abiding citizens. Some of them are convicted felons and so they killed somebody or drug trafficking. Well, do you think that they're going to want to vote for someone who's strong on immigration or weak on immigration? Well, if they had that experience, they're probably going to vote for someone who's strong on immigration. They might be very passionate about it. It might seem irrational to you. Why do they feel so passionate about that? But if you understand their story, you can see why that would matter to them. Or someone who has a different view on, a, on another issue that let's say the other party might be stronger on. You can see why, or or whether they are stronger on or not, but whatever the media is portraying that's going to happen if this guy wins or that guy wins, whatever that issue is, if that person has a personal connection to it, whether it has to do with their background, their socioeconomic background, how they grew up, uh, whether it has to do with healthcare issues, like, you know, I'm worried about losing my health my healthcare and, you know, because I had all these issues and I had some trauma around it. So whatever it is, again, I don't want to get to specifics because then I don't want to dilute our message here because I'm not here to take sides. What I'm here to do is that's another podcast, my political podcast. <laughs> no, I'm just um, what I'm here to, what, what I'm suggesting today is that if you don't like another person's politics, I invite you to get curious. I invite you to, instead of judge them, try to understand where they're coming from. I'm not telling you to agree with them. I'm not telling you to change your mind. But at least you can hear, like, you know what? It makes total sense why you would vote for so-and-so. It also makes total sense why I would vote differently and think they're a bozo. But, you know, so you, you don't have, have to say that Yeah, part. but you don't say that part. But so so that's, that's making space for the other. And this is what we do in every issue in a relationship, but especially as it's pol polarized issues. Because this idea of polarization is the opposite of what relationships are about. It's about accepting that there can be a both and as opposed to my way or the highway. Mm. And that's the hardest thing for couples to deal with or anyone to deal with, but especially at issues where there's so much fear around. I would say it sounds like getting curious about the bigger picture would mostly apply to a relationship, a marriage, a committed relationship, rather than being at the workplace and maybe trying to have compassion for your coworker where you really don't know their childhood story that much. So you're not gonna like suddenly ask them, so why is it that this topic is so important to you? Like that's a more surface right. level You don't have to ask that, but you could imagine that. You could imagine that, you know what? If they're so strong about their position, even though I th I'm really triggered because I completely disagree, they probably have a good reason why they feel that way. And I don't yeah. need to judge them. I don't think they're crazy or think they're wrong or tell them why they're wrong. I can agree to disagree. You know, my mm -hmm. mother always told me growing up, no, the two things you can't talk about with people, politics and religion. Of course, I like talking about both of those things. <laughs> so I was like, really, you know, I'm very, I was very passionate as a kid about, about those things. And I like talking about those things, but it, Got me in trouble with my friends. Yeah, for sure. And in this day and age, you'd have no fight. You'd have no fighting chance, <laughs> <laughs> unless you find someone who agrees with you, and that's that's you, know, you have an echo chamber that yeah that feels a lot safer. Right, but, but marriage that probably doesn't last too long, where you agree about everything. But yes, I mean, it, this makes a lot of sense. I would say, you know, in extreme cases, like you said, the immigrant story, that's like a very uh, obvious instance where you could really understand some examples might be more subtle. Maybe one candidate is like reminds you of the things you didn't like about your dad or your mom or uh, even per perhaps an old relationship that you feel a little bit of, you know, traumatized by. There could be more subtle nuances where maybe at first glance you're like, why? Why doesn't he like the person, you know, why does he feel so strongly that way? So just realize like there's a quote we like to say, and, and I believe Harville Hendricks said it, if it's hysterical, so it's historical. So if someone's getting really hysterical about an issue, chances are there's a historical reason why that is. And, and that's where the opportunity we've talked before about mining for gold, um, 
in the conflict that there is something deeper there to get curious about and you can really accomplish so much when you mine for that gold and the outcome can be really beautiful when you discover what it is you could really connect deeply around this pain that somebody's feeling in a connected way and that's an absolutely amazing opportunity to to be able to experience so, yeah and that's enough for you if you see that person if you see that that's that was like with this client i had why is she getting so worked up but that's exactly if it's hysterical it's historical if you see that you could just tell yourself even if you don't know the answer there's obviously something else here so mm -hmm. i don't need to defend my candidate or feel triggered by it i can just validate her concern that makes sense that you feel that way mm. and and know that there's probably something else there and it could be that you'll figure out what it is and it could be you'll never know what it is but you can imagine that there's some other reason there because otherwise if it didn't really make if it didn't really it didn't really bother you so much then okay look i'm gonna vote for this guy there are plenty of people who are not passionate about politics and they'll just they'll vote for whoever they want to vote for and it's not a big deal and they're not like diehard fans but mm -hmm. they just it comes from a more like a rational, cold, you know, emotionless perspective. And then there's people who are just really passionate and really livid and really... And that's not to say that if you're passionate about a candidate, you had childhood trauma around it. Like, that, we're not suggesting that for everybody because passion, it's, it's easy no, to get passionate. No, it's not childhood trauma, but it's, it's... Whether it's the fear, again, it could be the fear that the media is telling you that this this is what's going to happen if this person wins. You know, you're not you're going to have this happen or not or not or lose this right or whatever it is, and that gets you to be passionate mm. about it. it. Doesn't mean like you something happened when you were two years old. It could just mean right. It could just yeah. mean that you're very um, your you're, sense of fear is heightened. So you're you're not using your logical brain necessarily. It's more of a emotional visceral reaction that you're getting because of the fear. Mm -hmm. You're in danger. You're really in danger. And a lot of people have a lot of anxiety. And it's more and more than ever. You know, when we were growing up, even though they had, you know, you had the debates and you had TV, you didn't have the internet. You didn't know what was going on. You didn't hear every little speech that the, every little comment that each candidate said every second of the day. You weren't completely bombarded with all of this. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I also think that the media was, was not as divisive as it is today, where a it's tamer. very like kind of, Again, I'm not saying one way or the other, but it's very polarized. Yeah, it makes it very stressful and very polarizing. What do you guys think? Do you think that the next time you come across somebody who's extremely passionate about a candidate, very incensed, maybe more than you think, do you think you can hold back and kind of ask yourself or just check with yourself, hmm, this person feels really you know, there must be something deeper going on here. I don't need to know what it is. Yeah. I don't need to defend myself, but I'm going to just leave it where they are at and not engage with them in a confrontational way. I'm going to make space for them to hear what they have to say and leave it at that. And validate it because it is, it is scary. I mean, whatever side you're on, it it does seem pretty scary What what's going to happen. And it's something you can validate and you can see why people would be extra impassioned, extra nervous, mm. and extra fearful. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And we could apply this to probably every topic, even things your kids are nervous about, maybe it just anything in life. When somebody has a bigger reaction or bigger feelings, it's usually because they're feeling anxious or scared, right? And we can show up for those people and help regulate their emotions by being a solid, stable figure, right? Especially in our families. So let's do that for our family members to help them get calm around these topics. And then we can have a little bit more calm in the home, which is the goal. Uh, one of the goals of us showing up for you <laughs> and doing this podcast because we, we would love to see you be able to, to bring more calm into your marriage. Yeah. So that's it for today. So use this, listen to it every day until November, what, November 5th? Fourth, fourth, <laughs> November 4th, fourth. who knows? And, and afterwards, because the aftermath, it's not going to, there are going to be a lot of unhappy people either way. Oh, goodness. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's for another podcast episode. Well, thanks for tuning in with us and we'll look forward to seeing you at the next episode. Take care. Take care.